Can you please include this in? <laughs> oh my god, can I get married? No. <laughs> she said, fine dining on, must like this, then she poo poo. Welcome back to another episode of Eat Book Food Guides. I'm Kiara. And I'm Zane. And long time no see. <laughs> 2019 eh. Two years, you know. Since our last prank. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so what are we going to do today? So today, it is a very special episode because we are going to hashtag Woo-hoo! support local and we're going to be trying some unique home-based food businesses for you guys. Mm, have you ever ordered from a home-based business before? Of course lah. During COVID, there were a lot of like home-based food businesses, right? So I... I I actually have a favourite and it is called Tahu Gede. It is basically tofu, they put beef inside, they put cheese, then they burn the cheese. Wow. And it is Taylor Swift approved. Huh? <laughs> I show you the picture. Is it in I show you. <laughs> it's Taylor Swift holding the food. <laughs> she really approved, yeah? Believe him. <laughs> so we already ordered the food to our second home, mm-hmm. the office. All we gotta do is just wait for it to arrive. Huh? Yes, it's Easy. a waiting game. But today really got a lot of items. I saw the list, right? I was like, wow! Let's not go. one, no? Nope. Not two, no? <gasps> six here eh, today. Six. Shall we eat? Yes, let's go! Come to our home. <laughs> anyway, thank you, uh, Sneaky Sushi. Yeah? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hey, we got six eh. Six, you know! <gasps> hey, go in! Go! go. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> okay, the food's all here! Are you, are you hungry or excited? Very hungry and very excited. Same, but yes. before we start, right, we want to uh, put a caution sign on. Oh, okay. Uh, we're gonna be as honest as we can, but don't forget our tastes are all very subjective. Mm-hmm. If we don't like certain things, don't, don't don't need to like not support them. So, are you ready for the first one? What is it? Okay, so if it book right got it book by Kiara, this one uh, the first one uh, got cookbook by Ri. <gasps> wow, so Ri owns cookbook, right? Ah uh, yes. But I don't own cookbook, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this one is actually interesting because you know. During the COVID period, right, mm. there's a lot of like uh, big sushi businesses that came out. But this one is very, very unique. You want to know why? Why? You tell me why lah. <laughs> What's unique about them that we know so far is that they make their own mentai sauce. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And they also offer the Korean version. It's like deconstructed gimbap. Mm. So it's like sushi big gimbap. I think so. You think so? Okay. Sure. How about we think the food in? One, two, three. <laughs> Bing! No, magic! Oh my gosh! Okay. Hi-ya. First and foremost, we, why do we have so many Ling Ling Long Our table is very busy, you know, suddenly. <laughs> we have the se- seasoned seaweed. Huh? Next, we have the seaweed flakes. This one is like oh. a bit seasoned with salt, sesame, and olive oil, mm, I guess. Mm, mm, wasabi. Ooh. Right over here, a small packet. And along with wasabi, it's soy sauce. Mm-hmm. Last but not least, we have <laughs> lettuce. Oh, oh, wait, what? <laughs> lettuce. Oh. Look at the amount of beef that they give. It's actually very, very generous, you know. Yes, yeah. So this one is your typical uh, common sushi bake, which is the salmon sushi bake. Yeah, and last but not least, they have a duo for this tray over here. Mm. Half is scallop balado, and the other half is prawn, but they are all mentaiko. Okay, let's try, let's try. Okay. We just scoop whatever we want here. That's it. A pinky start piece. Oh, That's fine dining, you know. <laughs> is, is, oh it, is it kimchi? It's kimchi fried rice. Mm. So you have the beef mm. layer and then there is a seaweed layer. And then I think below, is it like egg or is it cheese? I'm not sure. I think it's both. Eh. Shall we? Our very first bite of the day. Yes. And what time is it now? 2.30 p.m. Mm. <laughs> Let's go. Mm. It doesn't taste similar to other sushi bakes. It just tastes like a Korean dish. Yeah, it Home does. Home-cooked Korean dish. Mm. To be honest, personally, I would give the, the lettuce a miss. Mm. Because I feel like the lettuce might destroy the taste of the beef. Because the beef is very, very well marinated. Mm. And it's good leh. Alright. Next dish, next dish. Okay, you choose which one you want to try. Okay, how about you try the prawn, I try the uh, scallop okay, balado. Okay, on. Ah. Hey, the mentaiko layer is thick eh. Yeah, and then like you can see the scallop on top also. My one not very nice eh. <laughs> <laughs> Your scoop a bit ginormous ah. 
Hey, but I can see the prawn at the side. Oh, it came to, it comes with shell though. <laughs> I think that would be nicer Hello. if you remove the prawn shell. Yeah, okay, let me try, let's yeah? try. Wow, the scallop is actually very um, soft and I think it's a good amount of size. It is right at the corner. So that means if, if the food is at the corner, right, it means it's everywhere and mm. it's quite generous with it. How about you? How's the prawn? This one, I don't really get the umaminess of mentaiko. I mm. get the creaminess of mm, it. Yeah, um, right? They are really generous with the prawn because other than the one with shell that I took, right, there were little, little itty bitsy pieces of prawn inside. Oh. So, yeah. Okay, let's try the very last one. Mm. It is salmon mentaiko, right? Yes. From the looks of it, I can tell that the salmon pieces are, are like smashed kind. Mm, mm. A bit like the TikTok trend for sushi rice right now. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe I did with the sauce. Eh. Like, never use the sauce. What well, you think of it? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Eh, great minds eh. think alike, yeah. One is with wasabi, which is Kiara's, and mine is without. Okay, let's try. To be honest, I think the salmon flavor felt the best because we do get a bit of that seafoody flavors yeah. from the salmon, mm. not the mentaiko. But I think all three taste pretty good. Mm. I would order for like a party after COVID. <laughs> yeah. Okay lah, I mean for $38 for a medium serving, I think it's pretty reasonable. Too bad it's COVID. If not, this would be a great potluck dish to Yes, you go for a picnic, you bring this. That's Ooh. not bad. By the beach, you <gasps> eat. Oh. So romantic. Okay lah, next dish. Okay, next up we mm. have sliders from the orange store. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of home-based business, their story is somewhat the same. Like they cook a lot at home uh -huh. and then their friends and family say, eh, why wow, you should totally sell this. Mm. So this is one of them. And they have a trio of sliders here. Cheeseburger. Okay, I like that. Katsu. Ooh. And fish. Wow. Hey, you know what or not? What, what, what? The brioche bun, right? They actually made themselves. Mm. It is homemade brioche bun. Oof, everything. And you know what? Hadi Mirza, Singapore Idol, if you're as old as me, you should know who Hadi Mirza is. He also reviewed this oh. and he likes it. Oh. Do you know who Hadi Mirza is? I'm young, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I did this bun I put in your mouth. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, look at this. Oh, yo, you see? Oh. Wow, the cheese though. Very picture perfect. Yes, actually. yeah. Okay, so for the chicken katsu, it is honey garlic barbecue sauce. You can actually smell it from here. And mine looks like it's cheese on top, sauce below, and battered fish. Ooh, okay. okay. I'm gonna cut into half wow. a half. Because we find dining, huh? <laughs> and look at me, I really <laughs> just trying to squeeze it so that I can take it in one bite. <laughs> oh, I got uh, how to get married. <laughs> <laughs> Open bigger. Mm -hmm. The meat is a bit thick to the point where it feels a little bit like um, chicken. <laughs> But it is salami, you can see the fish fibers and all yeah. that. Yeah, there's like at least three layers of fish in my burger. The sliders do taste a bit homemade. So I feel like it's not too unhealthy, it's not overly fried, not greasy at all. Yeah. Yeah, even though they are really generous with the sauce, which I love mm. in my burgers. What about yours? Mine tastes uh, like the sauces kind of mix well together, which I'm pleasantly surprised. Mm. But the bun is actually very soft and it's also very tasty, the mm. bun itself. But the chicken is very good. Is it? Tender. Yeah, it's very tender. Then the, then the outside is crispy. Flavor wise, it doesn't taste restaurant quality, but it tastes like a mother's home cooked food. Okay, next up is their cheeseburgers. Mm. Wow, it's double patty, yo. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The cheese probably double layer also, but it looks thick. Thick. Okay, okay. let's try, let's try. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. It tastes very Chinese style. Mm. You know, oyster sauce or hoisin sauce or something. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's really good. Yeah, the star for this is the sauce. Eh. The sauce is the one that makes it like, wow, what is this? Mm -hmm. And apparently it's a homemade sauce, it's like secret recipe or something. Mm. Yeah, but it's like home, homemade style, mm. homemade flavors, but definitely not homemade level. Honestly, yeah. I actually like the cheeseburger the most. Same eh. Mm. I said, I tried only these two, you tried only that two, but the winner is the cheeseburger. Yeah. So yeah, get the cheeseburger one. <laughs> Okay, next up, my turn to clap. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, got lag. The next one is JP Kitchen. I think it's quite familiar. They offer like a wide range of like Japanese cuisines and some like different types of like unique things. Lah. So mm. we're gonna try these couple of items and then we see if it's nice or huh? Wow! Hey, wow. you see the Tobiko got two kinds. Eh? Yeah. Orange and, and green. green. Yo. Okay, there you go. One, three, two, two, three. It tastes exactly like the lobster topping that I usually get as an extra side at 
Ichiban sushi when I'm feeling bougie. Oh. <laughs> it's just whatever you can get at Ichiban sushi mm. into one big bowl yeah. with colorful Tobiko toppings. Yes. That's all. Okay, let's try this really interesting looking dry laksa bowl. Okay. I wonder why is this called dry laksa? Yeah, no, yeah, no. To me, it's like I'm trying to find the laksa in this bowl, but I cannot seem to find it. Let's try. Let's try. Mm? Okay, it's basically like a sweet and savory soy sauce based dry udon mm. that has a bit of spice in it. Yeah. In terms of the flavor, let's say if I just omit the name of the dish, right, I would still buy it. Right. Because it is actually very flavorful. It's like more on like the peppery side, sweet. Or the sweet ketchup manis. Ah. Kind of a bit. Yeah. The flavor is really not bad, but it's just the name that threw us off. Yeah. Okay, let's try the, the next one. Sate Inari. And is it really satay? I don't know. We try oh. and we see. I mean, just like the bowls, it looks pretty packed mm. in its packaging. So I think nine dollars is all right, lah. This sauce looks very familiar. It looks like the samyang sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You try, you try, you try. Yeah. I knew it. I know my samyang. I love uh, samyang. Oh. Then why you do samyang say two hours, ah? Because y'all never asked me. Yeah, <laughs> actually. Okay. okay. If y'all want say, oh, you oh say. Producers! <laughs> okay, Shall we? Yep, one, two, three. Okay, stay real. I'm as confused as I was just now. <laughs> because I taste every single element of what was said in the name of this dish. Yeah. I taste the samyang for sure. Mm -hmm. I really taste the beef satay. And then the inari, I taste the sweetness as well. Yeah. I feel like they're all delicious on its own. Together, yeah. it might be confusing, but it's still a flavor bomb. La. And guess what? They're on grab. Oh, is it? Yes! Oh. It, which is quite rare for home-based businesses, right? Mm, okay. So since they're on Grab, I feel like it's pretty easy to order from them because most home-based businesses is like big sale then they will have or like mm. every day they only release 10 sets or something. Uh. Yeah, so this one is more accessible la. Okay, so the takoyaki. So, so Kira, this is the Chuka Idako takoyaki. So, is that sashimi? <laughs> <laughs> it's seasoned baby octopus. Seasoned yeah. baby octopus. Oh. Let's eat. Let's eat. <laughs> Usually, takoyaki you find from you buy from Pasamalam cannot find the tentacles, one, but this one you find a whole baby octopus inside. Yeah. Sounds very morbid, but I mean generosity law. I feel like nothing much to shout about, eh? It just tastes like takoyaki. Yeah. Next. And now, to end off, we have desserts. Not Ooh. one, but three. Right. So, this is the first one. Do you want to introduce them to us? Yeah. Yes. So, they are from Hotok SG. So, they're the first place serving. Halal Artisanal Hotok in Singapore mm. And there's a back story behind this The owner's father oh. was actually a flight attendant okay. And he really missed this Korean street snack So these hotoks are based on her father's favourite hotok in Korea Usually hotok is like a sweet street snack okay. And we say that this dessert but because they're artisanal right mm. They have savoury flavours as well Ah, okay Bulgogi, Strawberry holiday, OG and Limpe crab for you. <laughs> you know why I chose Limpe crab for you? Why? Because I'm a big fan of chili crab oh. with deep fried mantou. Oh, yeah. I see, I see, so I'm I see. I'm hoping it will be that vibe. I just choose beef because I like beef. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready? Yes. Go. Mmm. But because it's my first time eating it, mm. so I don't really know what to expect. But when I bite into it, right, the first thing that I think of is, you know, the Korean pancake? It tastes like that, especially with the beef, it's like savoury. It tastes like a smaller version of a Korean pancake. What about the flavour of the beef you like? Okay lah. Got like some kimchi taste to it, but it's pretty flavourful. But I find that the skin is a bit too thick for me. I get what you mean. It's a bit of a chew because the texture is slightly different from the one I remember in Korea. Mm. It has a thicker, chewier consistency like mochi. And for my limpe crab for you, I'm, the filling is really like chili crab. I like that the crab bits are really real, but there is a strange bitter aftertaste. Right. We both try the OG, how about that? Okay, can. Actually, mm. oh. This, yeah. this looks the part already. This looks like what I tried in Korea. Let's, okay, let's eat this. Okay. Ready? Go. I enjoy this flavor much more. Yes. So much more, huh? Yeah. There is this thing, you know, at Pasamalam. Mm. Yeah, is it? I think so. 
the taste is like that because it is sweet, the nuts is nice. But again, I feel like the... It's a bit hard to chew, eh? Yeah. I think the sweet version works so much better because yeah. it kind of suits the greasy outer layer. Mmm, right? yes, yes, yes. Since it's called OG, it's, it's really closer to what I've tried in Korea before. Okay. Can we go on to the strawberry holiday? Yes, I need a holiday! Okay, let's go! Wait, is there like cream cheese inside? I think so. Okay, let's try it. Right. It reminds me of the bread, hot cranberry cheese bread. Okay, I, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Mm -hmm. Because right, it's like oily a bit and then there is like creamy, then there is sweet. And it became a, to a point where I don't know, I don't know what I'm eating. Mm. You know, I didn't enjoy this as much as the peanut one. I think it might be because there's no different texture, everything is just like soft. Yeah, actually that's very true mm. eh, huh? Mm. A bit one-dimensional but then the flavours is a bit clashing. Yeah, but among all of them, I have still have to say the OG is the best. Yeah, true. No. Same sentiments. Next dessert! Ta-da! Magic! Well, what does it look like to you? Um, what does it look like to you? <laughs> nasty cookie! Is it nasty cookie? No, these three gooey, gooey cookies are from Zing Sinfully Gooey Cookies. cookies. So this owner, she had to put her job on hold because of COVID and she's doing this on a side and she loves lava cookies, gooey cookies, so here are her creations. Creations! Thank you, Zid! Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, but I think the only difference is that uh, it is not halal certified, which is why for this particular dish, I am going to gracefully let Kiara do all the tasting for you. I'm just gonna rate it based on appearance, maybe. <laughs> The price point is like 3 for 14 which I think is pretty okay. Not mm. too bad. I mean, for the size that you're getting. Well, this one, we wanted to feature it because uh, it was recommended actually multiple times when we sent that question on our IGF. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, so okay. So we thought like, if people recommend it multiply, mm. we should try, right? Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to try this first. Okay. Uh, as you said just now, it really looks very familiar. Even <laughs> the placement of the Lotus Biscuit. But let me, let's, let's check the middle. Oh, it does look very yummy though. This one is crunchy on outside and gooey in the center. Really like nasty cookies. Is it sinfully gooey? It's gin sinfully gooey. Oh. <laughs> okay. And you can see the cross section, right? There's a good amount of that lotus filling in the center. I want to try the next one. Haha. <laughs> Let me try all and then I'll say what you want to say. Sorry. Oh! It. What? Then you look at this, okay? So sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, more. oh. <laughs> I knew that this shoe was gonna be really tough on me. You know, I eat all the cookies and everything. That's why I'm going F45 later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me try some. Okay. Mmm. You can't go wrong when there's Nutella inside the cookie, right? Right. Yeah, yeah so I like it when it's a salty chocolate cookie. Mm. Plus Nutella inside. Really nothing to fault then. <laughs> Don't see really like it's only no, half to more it. difficult on you. No, it's not. What? No, it's actually like a bit wet wet on the inside. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we are back. Mm. No, actually, I want to know is the flavor similar mm. compared to nasty cookie? Okay, on the inside, it's okay. it's okay. The cookie, firstly, is warm to touch, then it's very heavy. Then, later, when you take a bite into it, okay. it's like crunchy and crispy on the outside. Yeah. Inside, it's so warm and undercooked that it's a gruel. <gasps> Not only that, you get a little cheesy flavour when it's the red velvet one. And then when you take the lotus one, it's a very sweet and buttery flavour. Right. And then when you take the Nutella one, it's a rich hazelnut chocolate goo. And it's gin sinfully good. Great. But this one is really enjoyable from the outside in. Nothing quite, nothing bad about it eh. Good lah! Yeah, it's really good eh. Maybe if you're looking for a partner in your business, you can consider me lah. And then it will be Jin, <laughs> Jin Simply Gooey Cookies. <laughs> okay, so we are down to our final dessert, Ooh. which I think you will like. Why? And you belong in this kitchen. Why? Because <laughs> because it says here the confused kitchen, and the entire episode is today. She is she confused. <laughs> but this is not just any dessert. This is actually by Awesome Sauce, and me. It, <laughs> Maybe that's why this is here lah. Huh? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna open it. Okay, okay, then, okay. okay, then you guess what this is. Ready? Ta-da! It is not a pizza. <laughs> it looks beautiful eh. And you know why I'm so like in awe? Why? 
Because it has my favorite nut in the world. Wait, oh, pistachio! Yes! Huh? Oh. Call me again. Chio <laughs> So this is a Middle Eastern origin type of dessert. So it is made with like really tiny or rather thin slices of noodles. Mm. And then there is cheese. Sometimes they put cream inside. It is drowned with syrup. So that's good. And it is made by a mom who used to live overseas. She used to live in like uh, Middle East, USSR, India. And she wanted to make something that reminded her of her childhood. Oh. You see, all these home base got all storytelling one. It's like because they cannot find what they want, they make, then they sell. We're gonna put the dry ingredients here first, and for the sugar syrup, we're gonna do it individually so that we can control the sugar level and everything. Okay, okay, can. But I think originally, what the instructions that came with it, right, was sugar syrup, then pistachio, then rose petals. Just douse it all. Yeah, there, just right? douse it. Oh, that's so interesting. Oh, then there's cream inside. My apologies brother, it is not like your tiny little bihun, it is not. It is actually a pastry that has been shredded very very finely. It looks like it will taste good eh. Mmm, -hmm. mm, okay. Okay, so inside, or rather the main style of this particular dessert is cheese called jeepney, which is like something like your feta cheese but less salty. Mmm, if we are talking about unique for this episode, I feel like this it's the most unique dish I've tried today. When you first take a bite into it, it's like a really messy crunch mm. on the outside. Yeah. And as you go into the middle, it's gooey. It's not even salty. It's like a creamy milk powder kind of flavor. Mm. And then you know what hits you is the sweet syrup. And the sweet syrup, I think, got a bit of like rose flavor. Yeah, huh? that, I was about to say that because there's a bit of like a floral aftertaste at the end of it. But I think the fact that we were able to, you know, put the sauce individually i think it's good otherwise i think it'll be too sweet really mm, yeah 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 this is like a dessert that people expect me kiara from eat book to bring to a party ah. serious it actually working eat book very stressed huh, is it? people don't know where to go they message you oh and they say if not nice it's on you you know oh damn <laughs> so y'all better believe when you say it's nice in this episode oh. <laughs> <laughs> then again then again <laughs> then again taste is subjective yeah <laughs> But yeah, this is good. It, it, I'm gonna give it two thumbs up. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give it a two thumbs up also. You are really awesome sauce leh. <laughs> You're not a confused kitchen eh. Oh you my... are a good kitchen. That's right, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Magic. Wow, thank you for clearing the table, Zane <laughs> <laughs> and Kara. <Kiara. And> <laughs> so today we tried a lot of unique home-based food businesses. What are mm. your thoughts so far? I think today I was left a bit unexpected because honestly there were a couple of home-based food businesses and the thing is about all these businesses right it's like when it is popular among a lot of people when they have a lot of like people buying then i would want to try it oh yeah yeah but some of these items is things that i've never heard of before and i've never tried before and i'm glad i did um for me i feel like kind of brought a new perspective because i always thought home-based business to be a bit gimmicky or a bit expensive mm, but yeah. i I feel like we found a lot of gems as well. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think a challenge um, when ordering home-based business food is that mm. uh, they always have like limited big sales. Mm. So it's like first come first serve, you must be like on your phone. But like most of the time when we're working from home, we're really working. Yeah. So who has the time to go and fight for slots, right? Mm. Yeah, but for some stores that we have mentioned today, for example, JP Kitchen is available on Grab also. Mm. And I think they are able to produce a higher amount like, uh, a day so that's quite interesting because i think okay if there is one thing that i have to highlight about home based businesses is like the price of delivery differs from business to business and because of what you say you know like they operate in a small quantity where they have like limited space and limited num uh, number of help in terms of like getting delivery but it does take a while for you to get your food you have to reserve in advance yeah and it's not like commercial food you know wow so the gold medalist for today yes. la. Yeah, the gold medalist. i would say it's the last one the Kenefe. yes Okay, we don't know how to pronounce it, but you get it lah. It's, it's the one that we that is before this. Huh? The pastry from Awesome Sauce. Yeah. I feel like that's the gold medalist today mm. because it's unique. We don't really find it in Singapore. Mm. Uh, as compared to something else that is unique because it's gimmicky. What uh, about you? No, I think I must agree. Like the last dessert was one of my favorites, but I think the winner would be something that I will order again. So mm. it has to be the first one, which is the sushi bakes by. Cookbook by Ri. That mm. one was really, really. It left an impact on me because of the price, 
because of the amount of feelings that they were able to give mm. and also the variety. Actually, yeah, that was my close second also. Mm. So yeah, I will repurchase on them also. Mm. So thank you for watching this episode of Eat Book Food Guides. If you like this video, you can catch more over there. And remember to like, share, subscribe. And comment down if you want to see Zane more on Eat Book. <laughs>